Good evening, Paul. How are you? I'm very well, Andy, and welcome all to our Football Book Corner. Would you believe it? It's episode 12 uh, wow. this evening. Incredible, isn't it? Where do the weeks, the months, the years go, mate? God, goodness knows. So now we're at the business end, as they call it, the season, aren't we, in May? It's we've, incredible, isn't it? A Serbian media. But uh, we've covered so many books, haven't we? During yeah, that we 11 have. so far, we usually go on for about an hour and an hour and a half. It's, you know, <laughs> uh, plus extra added time. Um, yep. But briefly, let's just start, you know, tell the listeners, just introduce them to My Football Books and how they yep. can connect with you at your website. You do your uh, your monthly newsletter, etc., etc. So, first of all, uh, the floor is yours for uh, five okay. to come in. Yeah, excellent. So, uh, well, at the at the core of uh, uh, what um, I do, yeah, is the website. So it's uh, myfootballbooks dot com. So the website I created for uh, football book lovers out there, um, and it's uh, it's basically an online library of recommended reads, but also the latest releases of football books and also books that's coming soon. Uh, and the way the website's built, it's built into categories. So whether you're looking for a football book on your club or the international team, history, grounds, players, managers, you you name it. Every aspect of the, the beautiful game is covered. Uh, and yeah, and I'm on social media across Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. I've now got over 12,000 followers, actually. You mentioned the Magic 12, uh, which is incredible. And um, as you say, I also do a monthly newsletter. Uh, and um, through the website... I also sell merchandise, so my football book smug and my football bookmark, and um, and also I could use this opportunity just to and let you know that well they announced that at the start of May I launched a patron as well, which I know you guys do. Yes. I'm a patron of yourselves. Yeah. Um. So uh, yeah, I launched a patron as well um, for readers, authors, and publishers uh, um, to support basically the creation of what I do and maintain what I do as well. So. Uh, yeah, if people are interested, obviously look on the website for more information. Um, but that's it in a nutshell, as an introduction. So on your Patreon <laughs> page, uh, mm. what what is it? How do people subscribe yep. to it? And what content do you put on there that's different to what you put on your social media? Thank you for asking. So I've got three. There's a Patreon for a reader, an author, and... Uh, publisher so just as a it starts off from just two pound a month so as a reader you get to uh, i send a complimentary my football bookmark uh for anyone that does subscribe and what i'll do is you get early access to any feature art- articles that i publish before um yeah, it's shared via social media uh, and also a heads up of football books that's coming soon which i'll share in advance of uh, again on the website or on newsletters uh but also um, what I'm doing as well is a monthly book, football book giveaway. So any reader patrons, they'll be entered into uh, a draw for themselves, a draw to win a football book every month. But it'll be a newly released book as well. Um, and on top of that, a 10% discount on any uh, orders through uh, the merchandise, mugs and bookmarks, etc. So, And for the author... Uh, slightly different but basically if you've got a book that's coming out and um, we'll do a feature or i will do a feature on the website and again i'll do some book promotion to help um get your word out there through our social media channels uh add uh yourself to the, the your, your book to the website uh and you know specialize it to where you want to buy it. and that's the same for publishers as well so uh, for how many books you have that's coming out uh per month Fantastic. So, so go yeah. through it again. Your first tier is what is Re- it for tier one? It's reader, reader yeah. patron. Yeah. Uh, and that's just two pound a month. And then author patron, uh, and that's uh, for just five pound a month. And then publisher patron, which is eight pound a month. So the publisher, um, yeah, we'll put. I will share up to five books every month, uh, doing a feature of all of them. So really to get the. The word out there, and the aim is, of course, as well as, I suppose, helping me again create content and you know cover all the various uh, maintenance costs. Let's say um, uh, it helps, yeah, 
really to spread the word of the books, really. As we know, this, as we've covered on these now 12 podcasts, there's so many great books out there. And it's just giving them a platform. And that's hopefully what I do, really, through our podcasts and also through the social media channels uh, to get the word out there because there's so many great stories to be told. Absolutely. They're always being created every day. And I'm sure some more will be created in the month of May this year will be written about in the next few months and years down the line. So, yeah. Absolutely. So for £2, for £5, for £8, the £8 is going to appeal more to people that are authors of books, isn't it? Because that's what you're looking for and, you know, trying yeah. to promote those books and, and the £2 for anybody, really, that just likes enjoying and read, reading books. Yeah, and really anyone who just wants to support the work we do. Because yeah. the, the main idea of when I did uh, this was to, um, was to yeah, to give a platform for people yeah. if they're interested in books and know what to, don't know where to look because it, when I did it previously, it wasn't easy to find, so I'm hoping I've filled a gap, let's say. And, uh, yeah, just obviously it's, um, yeah, anyone that wishes to support, then it's much appreciated. And it just helps me continue to do what I do. Absolutely, Andy, because you do a fantastic yeah. job. Uh, Thank I know you. I know a bloke smoke up your backside every <laughs> month and every episode of our football book uh, podcast mm. with uh, with Andy Satchwell from myfootballbooks.com but you do such a fantastic job I Thank wouldn't you. have known of most of the books that I've seen and it's <laughs> only through your through your social media interaction I look up I don't share everything because we have got a group as well yeah. uh, a football yeah. book gr- corner group so I then share books that I share the books that I like into yeah. there and the same on my social medias if i like a book if a book appeals to me i go wow i like that and that's what i yeah. do as well with our podcast because you know you're the one that is the the uh, the book knowledge you're the one that <laughs> reads the books you're the one that knows and you have books sent to you and, yes. uh, and guys if yeah. you do want to send andy a book please do obviously yeah. he's not going to have time to read them all don't bother sending it to me because I'll never read them. I'm absolutely useless. I still ain't done, Grandpa, what was football like in the 70s yet. But right. I, I do like to buy them. I do like to collect them. But again, for me, it's just books that I like. And I do podcasts yeah. with certain authors. And we've done quite a few podcasts as well yeah. where, with authors to promote their football books. So I think we cover a lot of ground with what you yeah. do, what what we do uh, together and individually. What yeah. genre of football books appeals to you mainly and mostly, Ooh. Andy? That's a good question. Well, I, I always one that sticks out to me. I've always, for some reason, well, as I've got older, I've always had a bit of an interest in history. Uh, um, so if I, if, I, if I ever read anything outside of football books, it would be probably some yeah, in history and whatever avenue. So... If you put in the football books, football book history, yeah. you know, that talks about the, the game from uh, the early days, etc. There's so many great stories. And as you said, there's so many stories out there, which I, you know, through doing this uh, this project, whatever you want to call it, I find out more books that I never knew existed. And uh, there's so many great stories of how it started, not just, you know, um, here, but across the world. Uh, and there's so many individual stories as well. Um, so I love books like that. There's a couple of books that stick out in mind that really suit me. Like there's a book called Origin Stories by a guy called Chris Lee. Yeah. He does a great uh, blog outside right, and that's just a, that's a great book. It talks about the pioneers who took football to the world. So it's, yeah, does that make sense? So yeah, anything that's around the history and uh, football, uh, yeah, I love. But um, yeah, but I enjoy all all books pretty much. So there's some really interesting books you. You read about teams that you never knew as well, so not necessarily teams I follow, but some great stories out there. So, because uh, uh, there's a human element to all, a lot of, as we know, in football, isn't there? So, uh, Absolutely. it's such a passionate game for so many people, especially at this time of season as well. So, uh, there's tears, laughter, and everything, isn't there? You have to all the emotions. There's many, yeah, many smoke people bombs now. And rockets and oh god, yeah, yeah, <laughs> all, all, all sorts <laughs> at the moment, especially, yeah. and I suppose more prevalently 
uh, in in foreign uh, countries, mainly yeah. Europe, but South America is another place that they do like the rocket launcher at well, uh, the football uh, football ground. They, they do. I must admit that's one area I do like actually reading. If you read some of the South American books, uh, you know about um, yeah, River Plate, Boca yeah. Juniors, etc. Some of the they are fanatical. Like sometimes uh, you you watch some footage, footage, don't you? And you wonder how yeah. they can see the game before they can, you know, everything that's coming down from the stands. So, uh, <laughs> but there's been a few a... a few posts that I've looked at in social media where they've shown the great. I think in particular it was the River mm. Plate Stadium when they yeah. recently beat Boca Juniors, and yeah. and and all you could see was smoke. It was yeah. it was an unbelievable <laughs> bit, and I've seen it replicated. Yeah. Uh, I think in a, in a, in a, a Greek uh, ground in a Turkish yeah. ground and. You know, off yeah, that, recently. oh, absolutely. <laughs> they go ballistic. I think the Greeks are still looking for a venue for their uh, the equivalent of the FA Cup final, aren't they? Yeah. Because it <laughs> does tend to get a little bit rowdy. It but, uh, does. But there you go. Um, can I start with a book? Because I've written down 14 books that I've seen you promote. Uh, okay. You're, you're going to be the guy that's the, the, the lead, and I'm just going to play... <laughs> second in command but you did okay. t- touch upon history we did cover this on uh, the current view with terry curran in our book corner slot and it's taking no prisoners the legend of frank barson by john hardy ah, who's yeah. frank and what's the, the uh, synopsis about that book oh well that's uh, yeah it was, a, it was a hard man uh for many many years ago so uh uh written by john hardin i'm going off the top of my head a little yeah, bit here yeah. But uh, he's a legendary figure. Um, he, I remember his story. Of something. He, he was he, his job. Well, obviously in these times, back in the 1920s, it would have been. Uh, he works on a factory floor, and he became a footballing giant. Basically, he lived in the fortunes of the likes of Aston Villa and also Manchester yeah. United, uh, and uh, he earned uh, more caution than anyone had ever seen before. So uh, yellow cards and what have you. But he was, he was born, uh, I think, in Sheffield, I remember. So, and he had a very much um, a recognisable, no-nonsense kind of football style. So I couldn't imagine his last very long, you know, today. Because you can get a yellow card for anything, can't you, nowadays? But, well, uh, I don't know. The referee he last night lasting. didn't. <laughs> I think, uh, oh, I think, well, I think yeah. Madrid, the, 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 the one fella at the back, <laughs> well, I can't remember his name, begins with an M. Um, and, and I did last night because I was calling him all sorts. I could not yeah. believe how he still stayed on the pitch. And I, I thought at <laughs> I one stage the referee had forgot to bring his cards out in the first half. But yeah. Um, but, yeah, going back to Frank, if the referee did bring his cards with him, he <laughs> probably wouldn't have lasted 10 minutes unless he had no. that referee from last night. Yeah. No, I'm absolutely formidable. It was, it was infamous, hard man, and certainly set the standard in terms of uh, focused aggression, let's say. So, uh, uh, you know... Players like Norman Hunter, let's say Roy Keane, you know, they they should just try to emulate kind of that kind of uh, player, but that's long gone, isn't it now nowadays really? Um, but yeah, great story and a legendary figure. So uh, do you know what position uh, he played? Uh, oh, off the memory, I'm pretty sure he was midfield. Uh, okay. If I remember rightly, I think so. Mm-hmm. I've gone a little bit off memory, so mm-hmm. he was frequently. The reason why I think he was a ruthless tackler and. Uh, Quite an intelligent player as well, so I don't right. recall. I don't think he was in defence. He's still, yeah, he was a good footballer as well. So don't take that away as well. Um, yeah, he was very much a leader as well. Have you so ever I'm, heard of him, Andy? No, never. No, I hadn't. Heard. I didn't have him. No, mm. I didn't uh, at all. So, uh, mm. and that's that's the, that's the beauty of books, isn't it? it brings them to Absolutely, life. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. It does, so yeah. Uh, he would have been, he would have been really famous in the time, nineteen twenties. You know, football followers are obviously Villa fans and United fans would have known about yeah. it. Um, but uh, no, no, not not someone I knew of. And I but guess, I, I love the front cover of that book as well. Have you seen that? Yeah, it looks great. There's something great it? about the cover. Yeah, taking no prisoners. It stands out, doesn't it? But there were a, <laughs> there's, there's a few books about uh, former Villa greats of the past, isn't there? With yeah. uh, associated with the war years and 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 yeah. many years ago. I mean, Andy was it Ducat, the uh, the the cricket player Correct. and the, yeah. uh, the footballer. I mean, again, I've bought the book because it interests me. One of these days, I'm actually going to read it. But, you know, <laughs> I'd not heard of the fella before I looked at it on your 
social medias, and I thought, oh, that looks like a nice book, and yeah, and and then I went and bought it, and there, there are so, I mean, there's a book 1923, isn't there, of, of yes. 100 years ago, so I'm guessing yeah. that Frank would appear in, in that book in, in some capacity. Yeah, absolutely, yes, he would do, yeah, so that really captures the moment of, uh, yeah, 100 years ago, so obviously the times it was that, and it's just, uh, even the front cover of that particular book, you see everyone the flat caps, don't you? Great. And it's just, uh, it's uh, wonderful, isn't it, a wonderful image. Where did you uh, go wrong? Have, I know it's yeah it's it's it, yeah I, good good question I haven't got the answer so uh, but yeah amazing really amazing so I think of 1923 as well there was another book when you link it to Aston Villa called The Armistead Killing that's the one uh, I don't know if you've seen that one yeah that's the death of oh, a guy God, called Tommy Ball yeah yeah and the life of the man who, who basically shot him but it was a dramatic story and he was, he Tommy Ball was a key member of Aston Villa's 1923 All Star team and. Uh, um, but yeah, he was killed by I think he was um, a neighbour of his, or his la- his landlord and a neighbour. Yeah, um, on the evening of Armistice in 1923, tragic story. Uh, but again, brought to life through the likes of uh, authors. So, but yeah, some wonderful stories from that time. And that's why it's so important for the authors to, because <laughs> hmm. the authors aren't making a lot of money. There's not that many oh, no. people that are going to buy these kind of books. I always say I make podcasts that people don't really want to listen to because, you know, they're podcasts that interest me about players that interested me when I was a kid. So like yeah. Legends of the 70s, et cetera, et cetera. So I yeah. love to listen to their stories, but most of the modern day kids would go, in story more, who's he? You know, they'd go, Alan yeah. Moore, who would he be? I mean, I haven't done one with Alan Ball, sadly, he passed away before I started doing the podcast. Yeah. But the logs of you know, Alan Hudson and Charlie George and these great players that, that we grew up watching and loving, kids mm. today don't really know who they are and their heroes couldn't lace the boots of these gods of <laughs> yesteryear. And yeah. so the same could be said of these heroes of a of hundred years ago. And I guess the thing yeah. is, when we were got brought up watching football and playing football, it was ingrained in our culture. These days, mm. I don't think the kids are like us. They no. tend to no. just support players. Um, there's me saying that. I like to watch Manchester City because of Jack Grealish. But they, they play on their game consoles, etc. So yeah. I don't think they've got that connection with football as we were connected. Yeah. And because of that, because Good. of the love that we had, we look at things in the past just as glorious as what we look at them players that we grew up loving. Yeah, no, absolutely. I think there was a certain, um, I don't know, there was a connection really to the, um, yeah. you feel a real connection to the club, didn't you? Quite a lot of clubs that were owned by the local businessmen, yeah. weren't they? Uh, and the players, you could, uh, there's a great book always springs to mind called um, When Footballs Were Skinned. And uh, there were stories about players on there that are on the bus going home mm. with the fans. Yeah. You know, you couldn't suggest yeah. even... And that's no... Cause Jack Grealish, he just couldn't do it because he's the same. And now that's how football's changed, isn't it? It's, a, it's an entertainment... It's always been an entertainment sport, but it's now a... Um, mm. Yeah, a different kind of entertainment, isn't it? So, uh, with yeah, a global it, reach. It tends to be a boring entertainment. <laughs> well, many times I watch games <laughs> of football now. But yeah. going back to kids of today, I mean, yep. how many kids of today actually read football books of players of yesteryear or historic content in football. And that's why I love mm. the older books, because I do love the historical content and um, yeah. that, that, that that affection with uh, with football. I, I think you'll be probably surprised, actually. I think there's definitely been, um, over the last, what would I say? Probably the last five or ten years, there's been a massive increase in uh, the popularity of football books and more football books than ever Good. before. Yeah. And you can link it back to the likes of um, uh, Nick Hornby. You know his book, A Fever Pitch, of yeah. Arsenal. Yeah. Um, obviously, that was turned into a film as well. But there was something about a book that suddenly was like, oh, OK, what's this? And it kind of created a new kind of um, writers, let's say, out there as well. So... Uh, it's just gone, yeah, it's just getting bigger and bigger. And there's quite a lot of young authors actually out there that um, you see quite often, like the Armistead killing. I'm not sure how the age of the, the author of that book, Colin, uh, Colin Brown, but there's quite a lot of books that have come out recently. That it's their first book. 
Yeah. Uh, and they're of a you know, reasonably young age kind of thing. So uh, it's definitely more popular than it ever was. Uh, and it's kind of, yeah, coincided with, yeah, I think the growth of football as well. I think there's so many stories, isn't there? Yeah, good, And I think uh, I, when you asked about what am I interested in history, I think it's when you look back as well, you think, crikey, what it used to be like to what it is now. It's just, yeah, yeah it's like day and night, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, because <laughs> I, I, mean, I, I suppose, again, it's like, you know, you have so many Muppets that work in the media these days as pundits mm. and you know I've I've heard a number yeah. of them um being told about a player who is yeah. a legend and yeah. and these certain pundits don't even know who they are and you just think it's quite incredible how stupid some of these pundits are. They're not very good pundits. Yeah. And their knowledge of football is so poor, it's beyond comprehension. It's almost yeah. as though they only actually played football because they were half decent. I'm not saying that they were good at it because I watched them play and I don't think they were good. But somebody yeah. decided that they were good enough to offer them a contract and, and, and like cut out a career. I think probably when we were younger, let's say, probably yeah. back, uh, you there wasn't so much t- football on the tally, was there, and things no, like that. So all. you probably uh, you had the... The top real, uh, like your John, Mo- you know, I'm thinking of the commentators, John Mott and Barry Davis yeah. and, and what have you. But now there's so many channels of footballs everywhere. You've got, right everyone's got a fault, haven't they? Yeah. Everyone's got a point of, it's 24 7 to talk yeah. sport. They have to fill the hours, don't they? And, yeah, they uh, do. and I must admit, so much of it, uh, it's a groan of mine when you talk about the he scored, he's now on the biggest record ever, but uh, we're yeah. just talking about the Premier League. Yeah, absolutely. You know, hold on, that's, you forget, I like, so thankfully, Dixie Dean is getting mentioned, it seems now, because yeah. people are realising, oh, I think Harlan, which is a great player, absolutely, but, you know, Dixie Dean, that was before the Premier League, and his record is incredible. And then uh, Harry Kane, and then, I mean, they were saying about, you know, you think of Jimmy Greaves. Yeah. So, uh, I think it's just how, how the game's just got so more popular, and there's that media, social media as well. It creates a lot of uh, noise, doesn't it? It certainly does. And a lot does. of opinions. Yeah, it certainly <laughs> does, but I think it would be... Good Even better, yeah. If they was to talk about the older players yeah. of yesteryear more often, yeah. more frequently, as yeah. then people would look at, oh, I've never heard of him before. What did he do? Yeah. He play? Oh, he was. I'll go. And, I'll go and find a book and I'll yeah. read about him. And that's you know that's where I'm I'm uh, I'm, I'm going. So yeah, hopefully good. these football fans will look at, will source players of yesteryear, go and have a look, if there's a book, and uh, yeah. read the book, read all about it. Uh, Joe yeah. Araf, uh, the Metropa Cup, the Forgotten Cup, that seems oh, a yeah. very exciting book. It's one that took my fancy. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So that was uh, it's written by a guy called Joe Araf that actually did um, an, uh, a book on the Austrian team called Wonder Team. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, it's the Forgotten Cup about the Metro Cup, which um, um, basically it was the inter- during the interwar years. Um, but it was it was um, it came out. Oh, sorry, when it was played, uh, and it's basically like the equivalent almost of today's Champions League, really. Yeah. Uh, and um, uh, yeah, it's a, it's a really great dip into stories that again we're unknown of. I think the book covers. Uh, the period from 1920, yeah, the interwar years up to to 1939, 1940. So uh, I'm just struggling because I've got, I had it somewhere in front of me. So did uh, it die out because yeah. of the war, Andy? Is that why the Metropa Cup finished? Yes. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. Because of those days, certainly the um, yeah, the rise of obviously um, um, yeah, what was happening, of course, was um. Yeah, the uh, Hitler and all of that. Yeah, it happened with the Second World War, really. So I think mm. uh, I think that brought the end of it. So I've not read the book myself, so that's why I'm a little bit unsure. So I've only yeah, yeah, not yeah. got round to it yet. It came out, I think, was it last week or maybe the week before? Yeah, but it, it looks fascinating, really. really. It does. It features some of the likes of uh, Matthias Sindelar. So there might be names Legend. you recognise. Yeah, Sindelar. Yeah. yeah. Joseph Beacon yeah. as well. So. Dinner yeah. score some goals when we're talking about great score and this game. He did. <laughs> yeah. Days. Have you got that book? I uh, have. Yes, I have. Yeah, I can say. Because it's a book that's going to, it's on my shopping list. I look at but, things like that and I think, what a great book that looks. 
I've got well, to he, get that. I have a look, a glance through it. So um, he's got so it's fascinating stories like drawn from a lot of research from uh, like uh, Italian and Hungarian because it's based the Matura, the Matropa Cup was based very much on Central Europe. So yeah. it was Italy, Hungary, Austria, Czechoslovakia. So yeah. a lot of the research for the book was from those newspapers so that around that time. So, uh, but there's very much, um, I know there's a detailed look at the social political context. So as you said, you know, about the Hitler's election, the coup and the outbreak mm-hmm. of war tour and the, um, the Holocaust and what is covered in there as well. So uh, the details, yeah, how the club comes in evolved really. Because football um, really was a stronghold around mm. the uh, the cafe bars of Vienna, wasn't it? Yeah. Football really was, you know, in the heartlands there, the Austro-Hungarian yeah. Empire, and then you got the rise of the Germans and the Czechoslovakians, etc., yeah. etc. Et so, you know, then mm. then that Central Europe really was a hub of football, and, and Italy, of course. Yes. Um, the great Torino team that sadly yeah. um, on the 4th of May 1949 where the, the mm. plane carrying them back from Lisbon it, the the wing hit the, the wall of the Basilica and they yeah. crashed into the Supergar Hills above uh, Turin. Now they, they were a team that had the European Cup been about in the 40s then mm. it possibly wouldn't have been Real Madrid that was known yeah. as the first um What's the word I'm looking for? Because when we're looking at these yeah. sides, Newcastle were, Aston Villa yeah. were, you know, they were super clubs. But when you yeah. look at on a, a a European field, it's it's a different level, isn't it? So you can be fantastic in your own country, but when you start playing European competition like the Metropa Cup and then the European Cup, it, you, yeah. you're elevated, aren't you? So Definitely. Madrid were elevated for that five-year of domination. Now, yeah. if they'd have had that in the 40s, we would be looking at the great Grande Torino in exactly the same light. And, and it was a game in 1947 against Hungary where they had 10 players representing Italy from the Torino side. So, yeah. you know, again, wonderful football history and um, the Metropolitan Club, that looks like a fantastic read. Yeah, and it covers, uh, I know as well, the, some not just the players, also some of the great coaches. Bella Gutman is the name that you'll know of, oh, I'm sure. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. One of the coaches who went on a tremendous book that is on his own greatest comeback. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, he went, obviously, and he won the European Cup twice. He uh, did, he cursed them as well. Yeah. He cursed, Sorry? He cursed them, didn't he? Yes, that's it, yeah. He yeah, wanted to pay absolutely. rise and Benfica wouldn't <laughs> give it him, and he, he cursed them. That's it. <laughs> he he did, yeah. Xavier went, didn't he, to try and lift the curse. Uh, many exactly. years after but great um, story and he also done a lot of coaching in Brazil didn't he Bella Cutman I he mean he, he um, him and um, oh my days uh, you're going um, Torino, to you Torino's manager um, uh, <laughs> his name will come he back might, to me his yeah, name he'll will come back, back to me as well in a minute <laughs> but um, he, he, they were both on the way to a concentration camp where they decided yeah. to uh, to do one. And then, you know, Torino come out of that and the great Benfica, etc., come out of that as well. Uh, yeah. and, uh, and these stories are phenomenal stories. They the are. Stories they are. that need to be told. Yeah, absolutely. He was the, the well, Bella Gutman. Uh, his his stories of Crow were just on its own. He was literally in a uh, a Nazi uh, labour camp, wasn't he? Yeah, uh, well, he, yeah. he was tortured. Yeah, and, yeah. Uh, it's amazing. He survived the end of the Holocaust, really, mm-hmm. and got out of that. And then to, oh, it's just an incredible story, you know. But uh, you talk about life stories, you know. Wow, <laughs> that really is uh, a life story. To um, yeah to be um, talked about. Absolutely. What, um, what else have you uh, have you got for us, Andy? Okay, well, I've, I've, I mentioned a book, because um, I know we talk about latest releases, but I'll talk about a book I did read recently, Yeah. Um, which, because um, uh, of the time of the FA Cup as well, I read the, uh, the FA Cup when it really mattered. Yes. Uh, it's a book that's been out for a few yes. years, but he did a great um, 
trilogy of books covering the 1960s, uh, the 1970s and the 1980s yeah. as well. And as I say, the subtitle of the book is when the FA Cup really mattered. And I, because I was, I've been away, um, I went abroad and uh, I decided to take that book with me for whatever reason. So it's fresh in my mind. And the 1970s is it's called uh, From Ronnie Radford to Roger Osborne. Uh, and I know you're a big fan of the 70s and yeah. you think of some of the stories during that time. Um, yeah, it's incredible really. And some of the cup finals, you just, yeah. But I, I share a lot of them on my website about, sorry, through my social media about on this day. Uh, and it's around about yeah, this time you say yeah. on these day, 50 years ago, etc. cetera. Um, yeah, you've got the great finals such as Sunderland when they beat Leeds in uh, 73. Uh, and yeah, amongst that, but great, really great read. And I recommend people, yeah, if you want to know about, and the FA Cup really was magical, definitely. So I think it has a little bit, it's come back a little bit over over the years, mm. um, but not quite to the standard as it used to be. The whole the whole event, you know, the whole day, wasn't it? Uh, when I think about when I was younger, I think I so, think the but, whole event uh, could still mm. be what it was because yeah. we've actually got the channel now, Sky, that could. Yeah give all that coverage because it was the day yeah. coverage to, to the FA Cup um, yeah. but but they don't the biggest problem these days is that the League of Greed the Premier League has swallowed up everything and as a consequence yeah. in the FA Cup most teams these days field an understrength side which I yeah. think is an absolute disgrace I'd either yeah. boot them out of the Cup dock league points so you've got to find a way of, of sorting this yeah. out because the FA Cup was that special it's one of the few cups that they gave a lid to to keep that yeah. magic in there. And there is a great uh, book, The Cup. In fact, I, I did a podcast a couple of years ago when it came out, probably about 18 months ago it came out now, The Cup. It wasn't yeah. called the FA Cup, it was just called The Cup. Um, it was. Again, a fantastic read, isn't it? Some great stories. It does state that it's pictorial, but it isn't. There's some fabulous, fabulous yeah. stories in there. Yeah, I think I, I think uh, I think I've said this before, but I know it says a pictorial celebration. Yeah. But I think that probably down tones the book. I think yeah, some of the stories in it, the written words that uh, from the author Richard uh, Whitehead is yeah one of the best books I've read in a long time. So uh, I know it was short shortlisted for the Sunday Times Sports Book Awards 2023. So yeah, and it's, Richard uh, is a great, great writer, great writer. Yeah, isn't he, Richard? he is. And it's yeah, one of them kind of coffee table books, isn't it? It's yeah. more than a book. It's a it's a work of art. But I, for that reason, though, I don't leave it out because I know with my brothers, uh, I know one of the brothers, he would straight away pinch it and I'd never see it again. Yeah. So uh, it's a coffee table book, but make sure, yeah. Yeah, make sure you <laughs> buy your own book to put on your coffee table it, and not Exactly. Because if it's gone, someone will say, oh, can I look at that and borrow it? Cause it is one of those books and uh, you'll never see it again. So again, uh, but there you go. If you do go onto our <laughs> socials, um, you can see us. Spotify or any of the major uh, outlets for podcasts. I did a podcast with Richard where we we talked about Great uh, name, yeah. his book and and he, his love for Aston Villa as well. And uh, there's some great Villa stories in there as great West lesson, Bromwich yeah. Albion. There is no story about my team Birmingham City because we've never bloody won it. <laughs> <laughs> you got to the finals, didn't you? That I yeah, thirty-one and fifty-six. Manchester City. Thirty-six. Yeah. Uh, thirty-one and fifty-six. Yeah, I mean, yeah. going back to Hitler, I I do blame him for invading Poland because, of course, the uh, star of the day was Bert Troutman. And there is a wonderful yeah. book about Bert, isn't there? Because he was a member of Hitler's there youth. Is. Yeah, wonderful. Another incredible story. And there's, uh, mm. again, there's a video, um, uh, sorry, a documentary that came out some years ago called The Keeper. But, yeah, his is an incredible story, isn't it? And, uh, again, so he, was, uh, he was obviously a Nazi soldier, wasn't he? Yes. So, uh yeah, uh, and I came to here, and clearly at that time when he came over just at the end of the war, you know, um, he was hated, absolutely hated. Yeah. But it was his football prowess that won the people over, you know, Man City, and then he's just got into legendary status playing that cup final with a broken neck. <laughs> yes, yeah, Spud, Spud Murphy when he, yeah, he went in with it. a challenge with um, with uh, Bert Troutman, and and he yeah. just knocked his neck, and the, it, it broke a bone. In his neck. I mean, yeah. he didn't like snap yeah. his neck. He got he had got a broken neck, but he played on, and uh, yeah. that was the year of um, of the Revy plan, of course, and Manchester City 
uh, ran yeah. out three one winners. Yeah, that's it. No, great story. Great story. What uh, what uh, else has been uh, tickling your fancy, mate? Yeah, so that's books I've been looking. So I've got a, uh, let me just mention some of the um, more recent books that have come out. So uh, I like books I I've been sent and I feature them. So uh, uh, a book that I've been sent is called uh, Crossing the Park. It's by a guy called Peter Kenny Jones, and it's about the men who dared to play both Liverpool and Everton. Mm. Uh, and uh, yeah, it's some quite staggering stories when I think of. Um, some of the players that have had like, arm protection, etc. Nick Barnby, for one, if you remember him. Yes. Um, but he, uh, yeah, a good player, but he was absolutely hated when he uh, made the move across. Uh, mm. And yeah, so basically, it just basically the book shares the history of um, Liverpool and Everton, but it's told through the lives. So I think it's about 34 players, and it talks about the complex rivalry, the love-hate relationship, and how that's you know gone and up and down, etc. Over the years, but there's also a respect there. Yeah, they're two great clubs, aren't they? Oh, uh, and two, two theatres, I would call them, and mm. through Goodison Park. It's such a shame when Goodison Park goes, but anyway, that's a, that's a separate subject. Um, but yeah, it's a delightful um, recount of the stories of the good and the bad and the ugly who donned both blue and red. Uh, and yeah, how the rivalry's changed and the politics and often Why been involved Barnby in some so of the transfers. Because, I mean, a number of players have crossed Danny Park. Why Nick Barnby? Yeah. Why was he so hated? What did he do? Uh, it was just a case of, uh, I think, I'm trying to remember which way around. Yeah, he went from Everton to Liverpool. That was it. So, uh, I, I, it's, I'm trying to remember what it was. Yeah, just things out of there. But he was, for whatever reason, he was hated because he'd yeah. left Everton, you know, at such a time. He? You know, they loved him. You know, he was yeah, a good player yeah. there. And he just suddenly gone over to the other side. But that's what Liverpool uh, wanted him because he was a good player. If he was a crap player, yeah. they wouldn't have wanted him. Well, true, yeah. <laughs> yeah he went for love a and about six... Sorry? I suppose love and hate, I mean, because he was so loved was yeah. probably the reason why he was so despised. That's it. And it's yeah. just that. It's because, you you know, Everton a good club at that time back in, uh, it would have been early 2000s. Yeah. You know, um, she... and... Sheedy was a Liverpool player, wasn't he? That went to Everton. He was, but I think yeah. Sheedy was um, was a re- more of a reserve player, wasn't he? So yeah. because they didn't want him, they went to Everton, got a game, and then you know you, you haven't you haven't got that same impact with the fans, have you? Like with Barnley, yeah. clearly he was the star, and then he's he's gone to Liverpool. But, yeah, there's yeah. probably a, only one player that was liked by both, and that was Peter Beardsley. He was arguably yeah, loved by player. both sides. So what a player, player he was. Well. Yeah. Um, Knows the side as well as obviously Newcastle and England. So, um, but yeah, that, yeah. So that's uh, crossing the park by Peter Kenny Jones, uh, another uh, great author. He did a, a, he's done a number of books uh, on history. So he did one on his first book was Lidl at one hundred. Yeah. So uh, Can you say that name Lidl. Bell? Yeah, that's where you'll know it from. So yeah, yeah he wrote Billy the book what Billy a player Lidl. He was only Billy yeah. Lidl. Exactly. One so, uh, of Liverpool's all-time greats. In fact, when Birmingham beat Liverpool 9-1 in 1954, yes, kids, 9-1 in 1954, <laughs> Billy Little was Liverpool's goal scorer that day. Yeah, yeah, no, that's a great book, that in itself. It's called Billy Little at 100, that particular book, by the same yeah, author. Yeah. And it's basically like a family portrait of uh, well, an icon, wasn't it? That's yeah. an icon. Yeah, yeah. During those years. Um, so yeah, the other books that were released um, recently. Uh, again, this is that book. Sorry, is out from Pitch. The number one that's come out from Pitch is called uh, The Conquerors by a gentleman called Dev Bajwar. Yeah, uh, and it basically charts the rise, fall, and resurgence of Aston, uh, Aston Villa. I was about to say AC Milan. Milan. Mm-hmm. Yeah, across one of the club's legendary areas. So it was when Carlo Ancelotti, um, yeah, made them. Uh, uh, eight world champions and you know one of the things Carl, um, I remember reading the book where it says some of the because the, he was a player there as well at East Milan he won yeah, the Serie A twice yeah, Euro- yeah he, won, he won the European mm-hmm. Cup twice as a player mm-hmm. Europa so- Super Cup then as a manager he won the European Cup or Champions League now twice you know the amount of trophies he won playing and managing uh, AC Milan was incredible oh, I can't Carlo's think of many legend. managers yeah I can't think of many managers that have done both player and a manager at one club and won so many trophies. Uh, there's not many that springs to mind I can think of. So and, uh, and at other clubs as well. Mm. I mean, Carlo, Carlo's had oh, yeah. a fantastic career 
in football. Yeah. I mean, has there been a biography or an autobiography about um, Carlo? There has. Yeah, yeah. That came out um, a while back. Really okay. good book. Uh, I'm just trying to remember. So it was quiet. Li- yeah, that was it. It's, it's Quiet Leadership. Uh, it was the subtitle of the book. And it basically... I try and remember who wrote it. He'll come back to me in a minute. But um, yeah, really good. It's, it's a biography, basically. Not um, yeah. So it's a biography. Basically, it's told about his whole life story. It came out. I'm trying to think. Probably about ten years ago now. Maybe not that. Maybe five yeah. years ago. A really, really, really good book actually. It got a lot of accolades at the time when it came out. Mm-hmm. So uh, um, yeah, I think he had five Champions League titles to his name about that time. Same bad going, is it? Really? So you'll be cool. Someone like. Um like with Carlos, is that he's, the book's been written 10 years ago and Ancelotti yeah. has still won an awful yeah. lot in that yeah. time. That So, you know, there's there's probably going to be an updated version yeah. if and yeah. when he actually retires. Because, I mean, yeah. he, he's, he's still not that old, is he? I know, yeah. He can't be that old because he played him in um, yeah. the Atlanta team in the 90s or yeah. 80s, 90s, yeah, 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 wasn't I, it? I so, uh, Ancelotti playing, yeah. Yeah, yeah, so he hasn't, doesn't look like he's changed that much, does he? Apart no, he doesn't, from, actually. He's slightly greyer on top. He's worn um, very well. I mean, I think he got. I think he <laughs> aged a little bit last night over 90 minutes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think he aged also when he was at Goodison Park. Oh, he'd that that age that anyone, that would, wouldn't he? <laughs> <laughs> it could yeah. be worse. It could be at St Andrews. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> but, uh, well, sorry to any, any to- Evertonians that are listening in, but... Uh, I just can't believe they managed to get Ancelotti as a manager and the fact no, that he's, no. well, he, you know, obviously, anyway, that's uh, another story for another time, isn't it? But, yeah, that's called The Conquerors, anyway, that book, and it's about, uh, yeah, uh, it's an ode, an ode to, yeah, he's chopped top in FC, AC Milan side at that time, really. Um, uh, a couple of others, uh, again, I've been sent recently, uh, there's a good book, book called Out of the Wilderness, and I look, these are very different stories, I like these. Um, but it's it's by a guy called it's about a guy called Clive Holt, who was the uh, Burnley FC director, right. and basically he was linked to the club for for an unbelievable. Again, we talk about the olden times. He was linked to the club for thirty five years. Yes. So it's a it's it's a chock full of like anecdotes and untold stories. Okay. You know, he was, he was pretty much called um, Mr. Burnley. What his, uh, uh, and and who did uh, you say wrote that? Uh, so it's wrote with. Um, a guy called Dave Thomas. So yeah, he's written he a lot of Burnley board. books. He has, yeah. Well, he's written about 20 books, I think. So. Yeah, he wrote that he one about Bob Lord, didn't he? He did. That's mm. it, yeah. You've got it, yeah. So, um, so Clive Holt, yeah, the director collaborated with Dave Thomas on that. Would say. He left the board, uh, Clive Holt did, in, I think it was about 2020, I think it was, when oh, they were bought by an American company. Yeah. Um, but, yeah. Uh, yeah but uh, great stories and just yeah great stories about he went everywhere and there's, there's pictures in it as well where he went to these <laughs> which is really quite odd but he went to the camper van with his wife oh, right. for a lot of the games as well so yeah you see it on the front cover you think what's that about then oh, but yeah yeah he went to the away games and yeah he was he was a fan as well as obviously being a director so uh, um, but yeah yeah really really Again, interesting we were, story we were talking about that early doors wasn't we in the, in the podcast mm. and you know how football has changed, but you know yeah. you still up, up till recently had directors that cared that were fat and some would go to away games <laughs> in a camper van with the missus. She must have been a yeah. very understanding wife. Yeah, oh, well, yeah, but yeah, the wife, yes, yeah, so his wife. Well, we're well, assuming it's so. his wife. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, she she is pictured in the book, so I'm assuming she is. That way. Yeah, <laughs> uh, but yeah, travelled to all the games. Yeah, this huge. And by the way, the the van I'm talking about, it's like a huge motorhome. You know, right. it's... Uh, and it was, yeah, for, for every game, whether it was in the old fourth division when he first started and right to the Premier League, he went in this motorhome. So, oh, anyway, hell. just incredible, yeah. Right. Just, well, that sounds like... I know, yeah, just lovely stories, isn't it? So, there are uh, many and... stories like that, is there, Andy? <laughs> you know, you look at all the football clubs all around the world. Yeah. There can't be many stories about a director going and see away games in a camper van with his missus. <laughs> Great, isn't it? Yeah, Fabulous. I love it. Yeah, absolutely. Fabulous. And some of the stories, though, just from inside the boardroom, you know, you know, he, he's literally 35 years, and a couple like Burnley as well, um, you know, they've had a great history, but they've yeah. you know, gone some great times, haven't they, over the last five years or so. I don't know, I was coming back now to the Premier League, 
you know, they've, mm. they've, yeah, you must have seen some things. I think, crikey, football <laughs> ain't half changed in this time. So, uh, but yeah. great book, yeah. Out of the Wilderness, that's called. And the forward of that book's by Sean Dyche as well. So, oh, okay. Uh, uh, yeah, so great book. Um, also, another one, if you want me to uh, yes, interject you if you've got up. any no, at any time, up. but uh, another one that came out uh, in April was The Lionesses. There was bound to be a book come out about it. Uh, after the emphatic victory in the yeah. 2022 Women's Euros. And this is by, um, he's got the same surname, last name, Abdullah Abdullah. Uh, okay. He has written other books as well. So uh, it's called, yeah, Lionesses, uh, subtitled Game Changers. Uh, and uh, it's just a, getting an insight into the key players in the squad um, and uh, just a tactical analysis, really, the concepts and the tale of the, the coach. She's still a coach. I mean, yeah, she's still a coach. Serena Wagman. Yeah, well, yeah. Uh, I think she's Dutch. Yeah. So, um, and uh, yeah, just talks about the plans, uh, how it came about, and the stories involved. And yeah, great story. A great time, wasn't it? It really put, again, women's football's got steadily and steadily. You certainly see more books, I've noticed, coming out more and more. Uh, and uh, the game, you know, it'll always be different to the men's game. I think it's always unfair to compare it sometimes. Cause you, it's not you do, comparable. Yeah, it's not, you know, and that, that, that's no fault of, you know, later or anything like that. You know, we don't do all. the same, do we, so much with tennis. So I don't know why we do mm. the football kind of thing. It's just different. Do you know what I games. think it is? Yeah. I think the women try and compare to the men. Now, whether Possibly. it's, whether it's yeah. them that do it or whether it's the media that are driving I the narrative. I think you're right. Um, yeah. And, and, and then they just go along with it. But, you know, it's not Ella yeah. White's fault that, you know, she's, talked about she if yeah. she scored another goal she would be the leading England goal scorer of all time no you play in the women's team love you yeah, don't play yeah. in the men's team it's a separate game it's a yeah. it's almost a completely different game and they're brilliant in their own right what a noise it does it Absolutely. tell you how they how they can fill a, a stadium at Wembley with only 77,000 does it does, that's a great feat that is I mean, if you're, looking, like, if you're looking at the men's game, FA mm, Cup final or whatever, yeah, mm, Wembley Stadium, if it's a sellout, there's 90,000 that turn up. Yeah. There's not yeah. a fair seat. Well, women can actually fill Wembley with 77,000. Really? Yeah, right. it's incredible. I mean, I don't know if you know. <laughs> not sure I did that. But yeah, I, I don't know how they do it, but it, it's always classed as a sellout. They've sold yeah, out, no tickets. And then you look at the attendance, world record, 77,000. I'm going, you're yeah, yeah. old 90. Where's your 36,000 missing fans? But nobody (laughs) ever... And that's what annoys me with the women's game. I'm a big fan of football and a big fan I used to do with Birmingham City Ladies before it was the women. Uh, I'm a big fan, yeah. Yeah, Yeah. I used to be the stadium announcer there at at Birmingham. I I give up a good couple of three years or more. Excellent. um, All three. Just give up my time as a volunteer. Uh, Thoroughly enjoyed it. Loved every minute of it. But that was back then, and since the money has come in, it's got a little bit more popular. Shippers, yeah. bless him, said it had changed, and, and it has changed. And, yeah. and and I do think that they... I'd like to see more balance, if I'm honest. So, you know, we've sold these tickets, yeah, but we've given away lots to corporate, etc., etc. Yeah. Because yeah. Yeah. if you're a kid okay. and you want to go and watch the Lionesses or the women's game, and it's sold yeah. out. How can you buy that ticket? And then when it's yeah. seventy-seven thousand, you think thirteen thousand. I could have had that ticket. There's thirteen thousand entered yeah. up. It's not right. It ain't fair. It needs yeah. sorting out. But there's no one in the media that's got the balls to address mm. it. And that's the problem. Yeah. Where I don't like. I don't like the yeah. imbalance of anything. But there you yeah, go. Yeah, absolutely. That's my point. Still, they, yeah, you're right. You're right. And they still have the same. When you think about the goal, that winning goal, do you remember it was, it was Chloe Kelly, I think it was. Um, Fantastic, yeah. Was, the, clip, the emotion, it's the same in the men's game. It's the same, isn't it? it? Is, yeah. The emotion, it's, quite, it's the same with the women's game. It's brilliant. The emotion, oh, scoring a goal. It's, there's nothing better, is there? And I like so, him. Uh, I like the Lionesses. Yeah. I mean, I, you know, mm. it, it annoys me, the, the wokeness of it all. And if I'm honest, it puts me off. And I haven't yeah. watched it for some time. Only for that reason... I'm sick and yeah. tired of listening to these whingers telling us that if you don't watch it, you're sexist. You should watch it. It's a brilliant yeah. game. 
No, no, no. Let people watch it if they want to watch yeah, it. Yeah, exactly. Stop ramming exactly. it down the throats and be exactly. honest. But, I mean, I like uh, Georgia Stanway. I think she's a great player. I, yeah. I love yeah. um, uh, Ella Toon. I think she's a great player. Yeah, uh, The yeah. girl up front from Man United. Um, oh, again, yeah. When I she got back here, that was a cracking oh, one. You remember fab- that one? Fab- what a goal that was. I've at Lane. Yeah, and I've watched them <laughs> and I thought, absolute <laughs> brilliant. Yeah. And um, and and I do think that they've got some really really good players, but I, I yeah. just wish they'd stop going on. And it, it, again, it, it just puts me off. Yeah, I and, know. You and mean. then yeah. then you forget the names, you forget how how good they are. But you know, yeah, take it for what it is. Exactly. So, yeah. um, so yeah, that's come out, and then you've got the Women's World Cup coming up. So uh, as well, I know there's a book coming up which I'll probably mention uh, if I remember later on. Um, but moving on, uh, another book that's come out. You might, I think, I might have mentioned this on one of your um, with Terry Curran. I might remember, but it's called McMaster and Commander: uh, The Business of Winning. No, uh, I don't think we've had that. No, one, yeah. okay, I might be thinking of something else. So it's uh, It'll written be by. <laughs> <laughs> so it's written by called John McMaster, who played in the Aberdeen team, uh, okay. but won um, the the Gothenburg Greats. You know, they yeah. won the European Cup Winners Cup in nineteen. 19- 83, wasn't it? Yeah, 40 years ago. So, uh, yeah. Yeah, so it's about him. And, um, yeah, it tells about his years, but also, uh, you know, working under the likes of Sir Alex Ferguson. Uh, and that's come out through Morgan Lawrence Publishing Services. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. Uh, and, um, yeah, really great little book as well. So, uh, again, it's a player I'm not really familiar of or couldn't recall, really, until I started reading it. So, uh, yeah. but a great, yeah, great anecdotes and stories in there. They've, they've published a few books recently, haven't they? They have, them? yeah. They have, yeah. It's the, the guy, um, uh, Matthew Mann, I think it is. Yes, that's that set it up. Yeah, yeah. so uh, I think he's Leicester-based, so not yeah, far Barry, from where Barry, I'm originally Barry from. Yeah, points, isn't it? It's got Barry, something yes, to do with it. It, the old Leicester director. Yeah. yeah, that's it, yeah. yeah they published Barry, um, Barry Pierpont's book as well. Mm. That came out a few years ago, so... But yeah, that's uh, McMaster and Commander, the business of winning. So that came out in came out in April, uh, and it's written alongside um, a number of other authors: David Christie, Neil Martin, and Robin uh, McCoolson. I might have pronounced that wrong. So uh, that's another book to look out for, certainly for uh, any Aberdeen fans out there as well, and fans of the eighties. And uh, what a great team that was. Um, I'll mention a couple of those from April uh, that came out. Um, there was one quite topical. It was the way it came out is exactly the same time as um, Graham Potter lost his job or is having his problems at Chelsea. But it's called Potter Hot Cut, Hot Cut and the Desk in East London, and it basically talks about his rise when he um, he was managing uh, in the Swedish fourth division. Yeah, and uh, he took a team called. Oh, well, I'm going to try and pronounce this, but yeah, I'd rather uh, actually, yeah. I'm going to go with the initials OFK. I think they're better now. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, that's easier. Yeah. And he took them from the Swedish fourth division to the Europa League, Graham yeah. Potter. So uh, he did some great things. Obviously, that's what got him to fame, and that's why Brighton took him, didn't they? Uh, and he did well there, and then. No one succeeds at Chelsea or give it enough time, haven't they, at Chelsea? It doesn't seem. I think this <laughs> anyway, is the problem, there. isn't it, in when you don't yeah. buy the players and when you yeah. have too many players that come in and you just think, well, how's that going to work? <laughs> and clearly it didn't. And, you know, good luck yeah. to the new manager that, that comes into Chelsea because they've yeah. got one hell of a job to... I mean, they've got some great players, but they've yeah. got a, uh, a lot of sorting out. But let's hope that Potter gets back in the game quickly. I'm sure he will. May yeah. have to go back to the championship, um, mm, bring the team up. up. Yeah, and, you know, because that that tends to happen. I think the higher that you go, the mightier that you fall, don't don't you? So yeah, to go yeah, to Chelsea agree. there and then perceived a failure. I don't think it was a failure. But yeah, perceived a failure. Early. Yeah, I maybe think so. too early. You may be too early because he's done so well, and I think this story indicates how well he did. You know, with a club, you know, played in the Swedish fourth. It's took to Europa League. Yeah. You know, it's uh, and that's what's good about his story. It's a lot of the football fans. How would you turn you know, him down? It's an underdog kind of story, isn't it? How would you turn down Chelsea? If you're grand and, yeah, well, true, and they offer true. you that job, 
and all that yeah. money, etc., and what have you. How, how yeah. do you think, well, okay, I'm doing well at Brighton, but, you know, mm. if things don't go well, me better players have been sold, then we start going off the boil. I might get yeah. the sack next season because this is what happens in football. I've got the yeah. gig there at Chelsea. I'm going to back myself. And um, you can't blame him for that. I think anybody no. would do that. And it just didn't quite happen for him. But, but good luck to yeah. Graham Potter. He's a, apparently he's a, a, a nice kid. And that made yeah. his league debut for Birmingham City as well. So all yeah. born. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, is he? Yeah, oh, is yeah, he? yeah. He's a local. Oh, local I did local. not know that. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. that's interesting. Yeah, I want to uh, give a shout out while we was talking about Morgan and... Uh, well, they yeah. Morgan Lawrence. Morgan uh, Lawrence, yeah. Publishers. Three games in May and a 20-year oh, okay. odyssey that defined uh, Sir Alex Ferguson's Manchester United by Rob Carlos. Now, I've done a podcast with Rob. Uh, Rob's a pal of mine. He went, um, we grew up in a, a similar area in Birmingham. Um, okay, um, yes, yeah, a similar age as well. He supports Aston Villa. Uh, I grew up supporting Birmingham City. I don't suppose I really support anyone these days. I just support <laughs> football and love football. But, yeah. um, I, and I said to, to, to Rob in there, you know, sometimes people think it's difficult when you're writing books about other clubs. But I mm. think it's more... Um, I think it's more enthralling and, and more encompassing because yeah. you're actually writing about something that y- you might not have known an awful lot about when you thought, oh, I really mm. like them. Then you start yeah. discovering things and then you start putting the bits and pieces together, you interview and a few fans. And then all yeah. of a sudden, you know, you have got that book and I'm sure that that's how it, it, it pretty much started with Rob when he, he watched that final. Um, yeah. and, and the kind of... The way that you look at it, until three games to go, they'd won nothing. Yeah, but I, I, guess, I guess all teams, Man City, you know, they've won nothing yet. Yeah. Nothing. True. You know, if they yeah. beat Chelsea, they win the league. They yeah. play another game that they probably rest all the players in the league. But it usually is the last game of the season where you win the league. But they've won it a yeah. little bit earlier this season because Arsenal have faltered of late. Yeah. But then you play in the FA Cup final. And then you win yeah. another cup, and then you've got the other yeah. one. So I guess all teams that win the double or the treble win it in two games. Because up yeah. to that last game two of the three. season and that game, they've actually won nothing. Yeah, no, you're you right. Yeah, in the position, don't you, to win it? Yeah, and uh, I would add they they could win it uh, the Premier League if uh, Forest beat Arsenal on Saturday, but uh, we can all dream. Anyway, yes. um, well, you never so... know because Arsenal, <laughs> you, you know, know, have fallen off yeah, a little bit now. They have. Yeah, but no, I, I do know that book though. Three games in May, so yeah, yeah, I think it was the anniversary just the other day. Actually, the first one of the three, obviously when they won the league, uh, and they won it at Old Trafford. I think it was the first time they actually won the league at Old Trafford. Oh, I remember right. Right, in that particular one under Sir Alex Ferguson's um, tenure, for whatever reason. I think when he won the, league. I might be wrong. I might yeah. have something vaguely that reminds me that uh, that was also part of the story as well. That he always wanted to win the league at. At Old Trafford, and he did, and uh, and then came. I think then it was the FA Cup, then the Champions yeah, League. Yeah. I think it's that way around. Yeah, yeah. it was. Yeah, hundred so, percent. Yeah, yeah. Then the FA so, Cup, then then Europe. Yeah, and I know that the book as well. I should because uh, the forwards by um, Steve Bruce, Neil Curtis. Yes. yes. Uh, and every copy sold, donated to uh, Prostate Cancer UK as well. So it's all for a good. A good need as well, a particular Absolutely. one. Absolutely, and if you do want to yeah. listen to Rob talking about it, just access mm. all the you know all the socials or the outlets, Spotify, Apple, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, and uh, look down for our SRB Media and all our podcasts are Great. there, and you can listen to Rob talking about his uh, well, it's his first book. So good luck, yeah. and, and well done to Rob, and thanks for your time making a podcast. Yeah, well done, excellent. What else have we got? Um, well, I'll t- refer back to a double book that came out then last month in April. Uh, it was again through Pitch. Uh, they obviously, as you know, they produce a lot yeah, of books, prolific. and this one's the uh, it's the third instalment of a, uh, a trilogy by a guy called Neil Fitzsimmons, and it's a trilogy on Chelsea FC. This one, the latest, is the rebirth of the Blues, and it's the rise of Chelsea Football Club in the mid uh, 1980s. So we touched a little yeah. bit on I think a little bit of Chelsea already, but it, it covers the areas of the club's history from. 77 to 1985, so uh, it recounts the well the bleak periods because the, the club 
financial problems, almost led to extinction at that time. Uh, and uh, it describes the disastrous season they had in 80 to 83, um, where they just escaped falling through the trapdoor into the third division. Mm. Uh, and then talks of the, the summer that followed when the likes of Kerry Dixon, the great Kerry Dixon, Pat Nevin, uh, those likes were right at Stamford Bridge, and it started a new era. So, uh, um, so yeah, it's part of a trilogy, and it's uh, yeah, it's a memoir, a chronicle of a important part in the history of Chelsea, and uh, yeah, quite oh. different to what it is now, isn't it? Yeah, oh, absolutely. The last 10 years. And I think a yeah. lot of mismanagement in them days as, mm. as well. Um, yeah. You know, you, you you look at the way that the the ownership of Chelsea was. Ken Bates. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. yeah. And then yeah. you look at the, some of the managers that he employed and you look and you think, well, a lot of that is self-inflicted. And of course, they sold yeah. Osgood and, um, and, and Alan Hudson in 1974 to finance that mm. East Stand. The, yeah. um, you know, the ownership had changed uh, from yeah. the Mears family to, uh, to Ken Bates and, yeah. You know, I think um, Mr. Mears had, well, he did admit to uh, to Alan that he, he he got carried away and he, he took his eye off yeah. the ball. And I think that's yeah. easy to do. And before you know where you are, Chelsea from being docked his diamonds and mm. then, you know, Dave yeah. Jackson took them on and yeah. they were the kings of the King's Road, won the first FA Cup, won the first uh, Cup in Europe. You know, within a, a few years, certainly I think within... 12 months of selling Alan Hudson and Peter Osgood, they were relegated yeah. to the second division. Bad management. Yeah. Bad management. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. One of his earlier books, I think it's called Rhapsody in Blue. Oh, yes. Uh, it talks about the early 70s. Yeah, that'd be that, a good yeah, one. Joyous. Yeah, they celebrate the times of Hudson and what have you. So, yeah. Uh, um, but yeah, Rebirth of the Blues is the, the latest one in that. So, uh, and Ken Bates, he famously bought him for a pound, didn't he, from yeah, Martin? Yeah. In '82, so yeah, uh, reckon he was overcharged. Uh, <laughs> yes, yes. I also remember the story. I remember he um, he threatened to put because um, yeah. there was a bit of crowd trouble. Fences, uh, yeah. electric fences. Yeah, yeah, did, yeah. So, uh, until eventually it was pulled, wasn't it? The last minute by the FA. So uh, I think mean, there was some health and safety issues with doing that. <clears throat> I mean, <laughs> Which you, is just bonkers. But, but but again, I mean, and he was being deadly serious. I remember it in, in them oh, days. Yeah. I mean, he was yeah. serious. I'm going to put yeah. an electric fence around her to keep them off the pitch. Look, yeah. we know you need to keep them off the pitch, but do you not think that's a little bit too drastic? You know, I mean, you can erect a fence, but plugging <laughs> it in is like... Yeah. You're going to fry a few fans there, Ken. But I know. again, that was um, Bates and, you know, what have you. But there you go. Maverick. Maverick, wasn't it? Yeah, so, he, uh, he, he, he yeah, was. You don't have Mavericks like that anymore. You know, whenever he was <laughs> just mad. But... Great, though. Great, uh, let's say, entertainment, let's say. But again, really I mean, you had Deadly Doug. Owners. Yeah, De- Deadly Doug yeah. at Villa. You had yeah, Batesy there, and you had Bob Lord. And, you know, yeah. going going back, at, at least you could say the one thing about the owners. Is, I wouldn't say that they, some of them necessarily cared. They cared more about the financial impacts and implications of the rather than the football club. But there were yeah. a lot of people that genuinely were fans made good and bought football clubs out of their own yeah. money back in the day. And uh, I think football yeah. was all the better for it. Definitely, definitely. Excellent. Uh, I'll mention a couple of books and I'll do it balanced because I'll talk about one for Rangers and I'll follow up by talking one for Celtic. So 77, I feel I 78, make... is it Rangers? Oh, uh, oh, that's one I'm not going to mention. That's one oh. that's coming out this month. I'll mention mm-hmm. that probably the next one. So, yeah, yeah I've... Uh, that's coming out next Monday, I think it is. But the one I was going to talk about was published last month. So, yeah, there's a couple that's come out recently on Rangers. This one uh, that came out in April was Our Rangers Heroes. And okay. it's basically incredible stories of forgotten heroes from across the ages, written by a guy called uh, Ian Hogg. Uh, and, um, yeah, it tells um, tales of a small number of, of more than 100, I think 1,500 players that have worn the, the blue jersey of Rangers. Who and there's some the funny. Best? The what, sorry? And who was the best? Wow, I don't know. I think it's quite... Uh, this is not so much like... This is more uh, the abstract kind of story. Got it, yeah. Uh, so, because I'm just looking at here rem- and reminding myself there's a story about an orphan who was racially abused, football, mm, an officer yeah. of the British Army, 
and against all odds, signed for Rangers during the Great War, Lovely. only for service to end in tragedy. So some of the stories, I think, are more not your, your well-known yeah, ones. There's yeah, one yeah. about a fire. There's actually one about a fiery winger that was sent off at gunpoint. Uh, one man who was the yeah the ultimate standard bearer at uh, Ibrox. What, what was so, his uh, name then? Got sent at, at gunpoint. Oh, I don't know. It doesn't say that on here. Okay. Yeah, I don't know. I like uh, things not... like that. They interest me. Yeah, fascinating, aren't they? So uh, Slim Jimmy, Slim Jim Baxter in there. He put more than he probably is mentioned in there. Yeah, yeah. So I've I mean, not got a full he, list. Of... He went to Sunderland, yeah. didn't he? Sunderland, and then your team, nothing in Forest. Yes, he did. Yeah, Jim Baxter. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Uh, but there's another, another one I'm just reading here. Some 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 great stories in here. But there's a Rangers, Everton, an Irish legend who went to his grave dogged by an unfounded and ultimately untrue allegations of sectarianism. So there's oh, lots of different yeah. stories. So this is basically what that is. It's a, it's an incredible stories of forgotten Rangers heroes. How so long not the are the famous stories? Ones. Are they a page or two or a? They're not going to give a whole chapter um, to a story. No, they are. Um, let's have a quick look. Lot, are they bite, that, bite size know. little stories? Yeah, I'm thinking so. So let me just. So have a look. it would be a book that you wouldn't necessarily have to read from front to back or back. You could read it back to front you or could dip, in. dip in, can't yes. you? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. So you've got stories, yeah. So it's breaking out into chapters. So you've got um, so one chapter's titled The Swedish Scotsman. And then you've got the um, one about the um, the Ukrainian son of uh, Oskar. So I'm not sure what that's about. Sheffield uh, Wednesday have just gone three nil up. Have they? Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Curran's going to be phoning me in a bit. <laughs> uh, how long's left? Twenty minutes. Yeah, twenty minutes. 20 minutes. Great bit of skill. Wow, as well. it was a great goal. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I don't know about, uh, you know, um, no allegiance. I do like Sheffield Wednesday. I, I don't know why. I just like Sheffield Wednesday as a club. Um, not that I follow them. But uh, there's something almost right about that. Because you consider how many points they got in the championship. Oh, you know, 96. Ahead of everyone else. Craig, 96. Craig. 96. Crazy, and you, yeah, 96 you and you don't win the league. It's incredible. Yeah. Absolutely. It's very similar to the Wrexham Notts County story, isn't it? It was Lee, Greg, Lee Gregory. He just dummied it. And uh, it, oh, it was fantastic. And uh, fellas just took it away. Uh, he's got ever... the second goal as well, didn't he, Gregory? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 He, he didn't sc- he just dummied it for the uh, for the, this boy to uh, run on and score. Yeah. I I'm not familiar really with the players. I know some of the Sheffield Wednesday players, but there are a, there was a re- there's a reunion tonight at the uh, Devonshire Arms. And, oh, is um, there? Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. The Carlton Palmer's up there. Terry Curran. Um, Oh God! There's quite a, there's quite a Roger Wild. Roger's up there yeah. as well. Roger had organised it, so uh, yeah, right. they're That's gonna cool. be going balmy in that pub. And and I do well. do my stuff with Terry. I I really hope that Sheffield can pull it off and get promoted. Yeah. Far far too big a club to be in that third tier of English football. Oh, so, what Absolutely. else? What else have you got, mate? Uh, so I said I'd balance it. So that was a Rangers one, and then yeah. there was um, there was a Celtic book that came out, and uh, what 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 a job he's done there. And um, yeah. oh, here we go. I'll go with it. Oskologo. <laughs> yeah, Oskologo. Yeah, him that Ange. one. Everybody knows. Yeah, who Ange. Ange. Everyone knows who Ange and is. Yeah, so. And Ange. <laughs> yeah. So this one was written just before his obviously his latest um, title. It was written back in came out in March, and it's called Never Stop. Uh, and how Ange um, brought the fire back to Celtic. So uh, yeah, it's a, straight, a great, great backstory to the guy. And I've seen, um, I saw an interview with him. And I, I love the story about how he grew up. But he grew up in Greece, and uh, at a young age, and I guess his mum and his dad wanted a better life and took him to Australia. Kind of. He's, and he tells a story about how he was very, you know, he's very grounded in terms of his mm-hmm. way of brought up. Talks very much about his mum and dad, how they really had to, you know, work hard, etc. You know, he takes everything. Everything he's doing now is just, uh, you know, it's so much easier compared to the life that his parents had. But um, I digress. Well, basically, it's a story about, yeah, the remarkable season when it came along. Because, obviously, Rangers had just won the title. Right? They made it 55. Yeah, did, yeah. Uh, and then um, Ange came in when Celtic was a bit of a turmoil and uh, took them to win the title in 21, what would it have been, 21-22. Uh, and they won the League Cup as well. So, it's, yeah. 
It's about his employment. So a great one there. Everything this year and all, to be fair. For Celtic, yeah, I think they are. They're on two already, are they? I think. I I think uh, so. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I think so. They, I mean, pretty much up there. They're um, by far and away the strongest side, aren't they? Again, Celtic. Yeah. Stevie Gerrard yeah, done absolutely. well at Rangers. To be fair, I think he he doesn't get the credit really that he deserves. Um, yeah, for what absolutely. he actually done up there at, at uh, Rangers, but yeah, and just really yep. turned the uh, Celtic around. Uh, of course, the first British team to win the uh, the European Cup, and one of yes. two. I think I'm right in saying only two European sides that have won what I perceive to be a true treble. So that means yeah. when you in old money when Celtic won the European Cup, you had to win your league. Mm, the only way yeah. you could play Forest when, <laughs> when you played I, second time you didn't win the league but you went in there as champions of Europe so yeah, I did, did, yeah go on sorry no so so for me the Champions League is different now because you have four from England you shouldn't yeah. you should only have the one it should be the European Cup the UEFA Cup and the Cup Winners Cup yeah. that's the yeah, way absolutely. that I look at football I don't and there are three great books by Stephen Scragg that talks yeah. about the three yeah. competitions, and and I, I wish that it still was. But um, Celtic and Ajax both won the cup, yeah. the FA Cup, mm. the, well, the the Dutch Cup. Uh, yeah. I think it was the seventy two seventy three season. I think with Ajax, where they'd won the league because again, Ajax are one of them that they yeah. didn't have to win the league, the Dutch league. Because they yeah. were European champions, they won it three three seasons on the trot. And you got the yeah. great Feyenoord team that was round oh, yeah. there in Holland at the time who won the European Cup in 1970. So, you know, yeah. Dutch football was really on the up. And I think I'm going to lead, that leads us nicely into a podcast I've done recently with Gary Thacker, Dutch Master, oh, which comes out on the 22nd of May, oh, four days yeah. time. So I'm looking yeah. forward to that book, and Gary's always good fun, fun to knowledge, and oh, uh, yeah. also the author of Beautiful Bridesmaids Dressed in Orange, so and and yeah. part of these football times with Stephen uh, and many other authors and journalists. At that wonderful, um, well, they do a publication, don't they? They do magazines, they write they books, do. and they make yeah, them fantastic. Times. Uh, podcast as well these football times so well done guys yeah no great I'm looking forward to that one yeah it comes out on Monday and what a great author yeah. Yeah, Gary Packer is so I've communicated a few times with him via via um, email and Twitter etc yeah he's a good um, lad I like DMs. Yeah, yeah he knows his, he sort of knows his stuff doesn't he so, yeah uh, Chelsea and I've, I've, yes he is yeah he, well he wrote the book didn't he? Out, the out, of, out of the blue yeah, yeah. yeah. I remember the list to your podcast you did with Gary on that book as well, yes. so it was yeah. great. Yeah, uh, I, I must admit, I didn't realise Taylor heard that book. I don't know why. I, I thought he was a Birmingham uh, from a Birmingham. Fan. I'm not sure. What, he's from Warsaw. He's from Warsaw. He's from where? Yeah, Warsaw. That's all. Right. That's why I yeah, thought. Yeah. yeah, that's it. That's but, it. When I heard him firstly, uh, for some reason, I thought he was. Yeah, never realised he was a Chelsea fan. <laughs> yeah, no, Yeah, and <laughs> and then like you know, he fell in love with Chelsea, and it was yeah. quite easy to do back in. Um, back in his day, because you know yeah. the uh, the swinging sixties and the Kings Road, yeah. etc. And uh, yeah, you know he um, he got into Chelsea and's been a Chelsea supporter ever since. But um, and also a fan of of Dutch football. So two great books, Dutch Masters. And I tell you what, two yeah. iconic covers as well. Um, both yeah. out yeah. by pitch, and the people at pitch that do the covers are different gravy. They have some fabulous, oh, they're wonderful, fabulous covers. I love the covers. Great. Yeah, an absolute that cover that I've got it literally in front of me. So I was uh, gratefully received the book as well. Um, so I'll be doing a feature of that uh, in the coming days ahead of its release on Monday. It's just I love the use of the colours in that great old red down the middle. Yeah. You know, on the Ajax, it's yeah, um, yeah it's just so recognisable and it's just brilliantly captured. But um, I mean, again, yeah, I- great. Iconic, and you know, I don't think yeah. people realise that. I mean, the Rediversity re- didn't start till the mid fifties. You know, until Renus Michaels took over at Ajax, Ajax were an amateur club. The game yeah. in Holland was an amateur game. And the mm. first professional that Ajax signed was Pete Kaiser. And yeah. um, and Jan Cruyff was the second. So, 
you know, yeah. uh, Gary goes through all that in the podcast and talks us through the uh, the wonderful Ajax side that yeah. conquered Europe with again total football in the uh, yeah. early seventies. Fantastic. Yeah, I wonder. Did you were you talking about the Champions League? I must. Have, I got in a bit of debate with someone who's a Man City fan. And talk about a Champions League, and okay, um, you know they win the league, so they do, they can be classed as a champion. But it's just isn't it? I find it most bizarre. It's not spoke about more. Why it's still called the Champions League? It's when you're thinking you could finish fourth and third, and you yeah. go into a, cha- but it's not Champions, is it? It's not Champions it's, League. It's the European the name is. It's the yeah. European Super League by stealth. Yeah, but they've never yeah. had the balls to call Champions it the Euro- European Super League <laughs> because of. All yeah. the you know that that surrounds it and and the breakaway yeah. of the European Super League, but and that's what yeah. it is. Absolutely, it's driven down the likes of our Ajax. As Ajax, yeah, they would they would they could still compete now, but they can't because of the money that because the second and third and fourth teams in the Premier League are getting the, all this money, yeah, uh, domestically, and because now they qualify. That's why Ajax is just falling back and back and back. No fault of theirs. It's just because the Dutch league is not as big as the English league. But when, you know, you competed against just one country to another country, they stood a better chance, didn't they, of winning. Yeah, I mean, uh, that, that's why just, yeah. That's why they yeah. won the European anyway. Super League. You, you look at the yeah. big players, at, you know, Juventus and in Spain, mm. Madrid, etc., and Barcelona. They, yeah. they know that in their domestic leagues, they cannot compete with the Premier League. It's impossible. Yeah. I mean, I think Leicester are one of the most richest clubs uh, in, in in Europe. Um, yeah. But I mean, they're, they're so far in debt. So when you look at what they're actually earning, but then when you look at what their, their debt yeah. is and the debt yeah. that they carry, it's incredible. But I think I if you look at the richest clubs in Europe, most of them are actually Premier League sides, oh, yeah. but aren't yeah, particularly yeah. very big Premier League sides. But because yeah. they're in the Premier League, they're earning all this money. So the Europeans know that the only way they can compete, bringing in better players, is by having the European Super League and having yeah. the competition on a level playing field. Yeah, but, you know, absolutely. watch this space. I think we're in exciting times. No, so it doesn't, we'll, we'll never be, well, I'm not sure we'll ever go back, will it? But, um, no, sadly. But yeah, no. It's just, it does sound quite nice, yeah, with that. Dutch Masters, it's great to remember those great teams, isn't it? Absolutely. And, uh, and absolutely, absolutely great author as well, um, is Gary. Absolutely. Um, I will then just segue, I suppose, around right about that area as well. There's a book that came out just, um, I don't know, this time last week. It's The Pre Lives of the Kaiser. Just look uh, at it. Oh, yeah, excellent. Not the book, uh, but the line. The yeah, the line. Yeah, Ulias. Um, we talked about yeah. that on the podcast this week with Terry. It, yeah. It's one that I'm ticking off as you're talking about it. As conquerors, yeah. we're on my uh, my list here as well. But <laughs> I mean, the three lies of the Kaiser. I mean, what a life yeah. had in football. Oh, wow, yeah. Absolutely. I love the front cover, by the way, on that book That's as well. Silly. I think it's lovely how it's been put together with the German flag. So, uh, is yeah, the bar, the bar is it with Peach? No, it's no. not. It is with Simon and Schuster. Okay. So they do. Um, they're good they're a big, as well. Yeah, they're good. They're a big uh, book publisher of uh, for loads of fiction books as well, etc. They're, oh. they're very they're big. They don't. Yeah, they do football books as well. But uh, yeah, really big big uh, publisher they are. Um, but yeah, it's through them. Great cover. Yeah, so. Uh, I know what you can mean you think of pitch. It does look like one of those pitch kind of covers, doesn't it? Yes, it does. So, uh, yeah. But yeah, Uli Hess, a wonderful writer. He's written some incredible books. The one that sticks out for me, two great books, actually, two books. One that's called Tor, T O R. Okay, yeah. It's German, German for goal. Yeah, the mm-hmm. story of German. Absolutely brilliant read, really brilliant read. He won loads of awards. Uh, and he wrote another book. Uh, obviously, German football he called the Bill- building the yellow wall, and it was about the incredible rise okay. in the court appeal of Borussia, uh, Borussia Dortmund, mm-hmm. which again won a football book of the year award. So you know, there's certain authors like yes. Ulias that's going to be a cracking read yeah. straight away. So uh, it'll appeal to lots of people. Uh, whatever he wrote, to be frank, mm-hmm. he's uh, one of these great. Or, you know what I mean? Was, he could write a great shopping list. You know, somehow. So, I'd, <laughs> like, I'd read, like a book. I'd love to read it. I'd like a book on um, Gunter Netzer. 
Yes, yeah. But I don't think there's anything that's out there in English about mm. about the great gun to net that. But again, it, it's like that. Would it sell in in this country? You know, people, well, lots of people know of Beckenbauer because of his time, not just as a yeah. player but as a manager. Um, yeah. Probably not as much for the NASL, although I do as, mm, uh, as yeah. a member of the Cosmos. But you know, he, he his name, I suppose, because his name was put on football boots as well. So yeah. his, his name carries a lot more weight than Guntanetsa, but. What a player yeah. Guntanetza was, and a shame that there isn't a book in English on the great Guntanetza. Um, perhaps, perhaps your next, that's your next project, Paul. I can't so, write. I can't write. Paper. I can't write. <laughs> <laughs> it takes me as long to write a book as to read it. Do you know? <laughs> yeah, the twelfth I always, yeah, I always give you a mention. I remember a couple of podcasts ago. Uh, there's never been a book written about a league cup. Hasn't it? Yes. So, uh, as far as I'm aware, so that's still yep. someone out Rob, there listening. Rob Carlos yeah. has, has written that. I believe it's coming out next year. Ah, oh, yeah, oh, I believe it's oh, coming oh, out next year. So I should be doing exclusive. A, yeah, doing a podcast with uh, Rob <laughs> about that book. In fact, I know yeah. it's coming out because during the seventies, I, I said to him, you know, Alan played in the seventy-two Cup final. Mm. Um, mm. Uh, Jim McCallion played. Did you know? Was it no one, Jim? Because he played in the FA Cup, wasn't it? But I went through the um, John McGovern. That was it. John played in the yeah seventy eight, didn't they? Uh, League Cup yeah, when they uh, first one. <laughs> and and through my podcast, I've gone. Do you know Kenny Ibbit? Kenny Ibbit scored the uh, the goal at Wembley in what was it seventy four? And yeah. and, and I says, you know, I could probably get you a player from every year in the 70s that they actually played in the final yeah. of the League Cup. So lots of play, Steve Perryman. I think Steve has mm. done something for it as well. But um, yeah. yeah, there's lots Great. of players that I've interviewed that have contributed to the book. So it's going to be a cracking read when it comes Will out be. Yeah, sometime next Will year. Be. Excellent. Before we, before we move on with friends back and back, I was looking at his... Because uh, I knew I was going to mention it, and I thought you'd mention it as well. So if you look at some of the, you know, his title, he won the Bundesliga. This is a player and as a manager with Bayern Munich. He won it as a player with Hamburger. He won the NA. As I think you mentioned the NASL um, North American League with the New York Cosmos. He won the World Cup as a player and as a manager. Yeah. He won the league. I, I didn't realise this one, so I, looked, I forgot. He won League One uh, with Marseille as a manager. Okay. Uh, UEFA Cup in 1996, Ballon d'Or twice, runner up twice. The list goes on and on. Just you know, how many, how many trophies? It's yeah. just unbelievable. It's like a, a yeah. <laughs> you could fit in a probably 20 careers. Oh, couldn't you? There's not won that many. He won career. as a player and manager. So yeah, really, I'm looking forward to that. Yeah, the three lives of him. Um. So yeah, uh, I'll. You've, we've already mentioned the Forgotten Cup over by Joe Raff, so that was yeah. uh, one of the books that I've been sent recently. Um, uh, one that came out recently, um, being sent, is Sixty Years of the World Cup. Yeah, I've got and that's that. That's by Brian yeah Barwick. Brian Barwick. Yeah. yeah, excellent. So um, it's basically um, looking at his. Well, he had a stint didn't he, as the CEO of the FA. Yes, uh, which brought me a unique experience. Really, being associated with some of the trials and tribulations trying to win the World Cup. So, yeah, it's about his 60-year relationship with the, uh, football's greatest prize. Uh, and he witnessed many of the great, famous games. I think it starts back from 1962 in Chile, wasn't it? Yeah. Uh, and, um, yeah, some of the iconic, kind of controversial moments that he's seen throughout that time. So, um, yeah, he's well-known, Brian Barwick, as, as you all know, as an OBE. I should say as well. Um, well known in broadcasting and sport, and he worked for BBC Sport for a match of a day editor for about eighteen years, I think it was. Right. So, uh, but yeah, so that's uh, sixty years of the World Cup reflections on the football's greatest show on earth, uh, and that came out recently. Um, another, but I think you just mentioned it, did you? I think nineteen seventy-seven, seventy-eight. Yes, right. So, yeah, yeah, that's it, Rangers. So. That's the historic season, Rangers FC and the, the treble um, that ended an era. So, yeah, it's written by a guy, a gentleman called David Hurd. 
Uh, and yeah, it tells a story, a historic season for Rangers on and off the pitch. Um, yeah. So, Captain, John Craig was man, a captain, wasn't he? So, Brilliant. at the time. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. There was, there was a funny story actually with Kenny Burns and Joe Gallagher. Ken, mm. Ken was reading something and, um, and and Joe was talking about the um, the great Rangers legend, uh, yeah. John Craig. And he said, yeah. no, it's John Gregg. And he said, John no, Gregg, yeah. He says, John yeah. Craig. He yeah. said, no, it's John Gregg. He says, John Craig. <laughs> and he said, after that, and Kenny Burns then butted him in the back of the head. <laughs> <laughs> and, and there was a punch up with uh, Kenny, Kenny and Joe on the uh, on the bus, um, Birmingham City players. But uh, yeah. that, that was Kenny Burns because Kenny's a massive uh, Rangers fan. Uh, Mr. Corinthian yeah. P.A. Jackson and the Casual Corinthians by Lou Walker. Ah, yeah. That looked yeah. like a good book, the Corinthians. Yeah, what a famous club they were, weren't they? Uh, yeah. In the early part of the team. Quite very unique, really. Absolutely. Uh, in terms of in terms of um, that story, so now it's fast. It's coming out by. I'm trying to remember the author. Yeah, Lou, back to Lou Walker. That's it, Lou Walker. Lou yeah, Walker. he wrote um, also a book on Andrew Watson. Uh, okay. Yeah. Um, you might remember a couple, out, couple, yeah, out, couple of years ago. I think it was. Yeah, yeah you you remember that one then? So, uh, but yeah, the black lad, weren't I? That's it. Mm. Correct. That's it. So yeah, that looks fascinating. It's, it's the first ever biography of the the guy. It's based on. Um, his pa, I think, is his nickname, was it? Nicholas Lane Jackson. Okay. He was the founding father of the famous Corinthian Football Club. So, uh, uh, fascinating. Because it, it, this Lou Walker, obviously, done lots of research. Um, but, uh, yeah, it's the team of the amateur gentlemen that was a phenomenon, weren't they, in the oh, game's yeah. early years. They achieved victories over FA Cup winners, league champions. Yeah. Uh, the team, the players twice comprised the world, um, sorry, the whole of the England national team. Uh, one overseas till tours, they introduce games to countries. You know, later become footballing powers. So I mentioned right at the start you know, about uh, origin stories yes. by Chris Lee, which is um, where pioneers took pioneers took football to the world. That's very much what Corinthian, uh, the casual Corinthians did. They uh, incredible story. They 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 yeah the way they transported football over that time. And over uh, to yeah. Brazil, the Corinthians, yes. of course. In yeah, South America. Le- yeah, yeah, massive. Leads me to another book that I've noticed on your uh, your site, your socials. Flamengo uh, winning all the cups. Stephen Brand. Yeah. Stephen's wrote a few books. His name is familiar with me. Yeah, he has. Yeah, he's written. Uh, I think he wrote a book on the Boca Juniors, actually. Okay. If I remember right, at least so uh, a couple of years back. Yeah, that's again coming out through um, Pitch Publishing. Uh, I'm trying to remember. Is it? I think it's in July. So, yeah, Flamengo winning all the cups. So, uh, what a great, again, they've got a great history, haven't they? Oh, um, no, no, no. They beat, uh, I'm trying to remember, they beat in the Intercontinental Cup, wasn't it? It was that one. They Liverpool certainly played one. Liverpool. Liverpool beat them, didn't they? Um, yeah. In, in that game, I believe. Uh, yeah. Through memory. Yeah. But, I um, mean, the great Zico played for Flamengo, didn't they? Yeah. Um, yeah, Flamengo. I mean, Flamengo is a dance. Flamengo is the football <laughs> club in Brazil. They're, um, yeah. They play in the Maracanã, don't they? Uh, Flamengo. Do what, sorry? They, they play at the um, Maracanã, don't they? Oh. Or, or don't I'm know. sure I'll they used to. I yeah, the Maracanã. They've got a, they've got a, a connection with the Maracanã. Again, again yeah. another one, the Flamengo's. That, you know, they've, they've got sort of Vasco de Gama. They've got some... Great football clubs, of course, Santos, that, that Pelly yeah. played. Uh, football's Poetic Licence by Joe Morris. That looks quite mm-hmm. interesting. I think there's some football poems in that book. Okay. I have, to, I have to buy that. I've written a few myself. Excellent. Yeah. I'm not, I'm not familiar with that one, actually. Is that by Joe Paul? It's by Joe Morris. Joe Morris. Yeah. Okay. Joe's, sure. Joe's been quite prolific on social media, trying to promote his book, etc. So, um so, yeah, I have oh. noticed uh, that book. Another book that I've noticed on your site, uh, Galvanised by David Safer. David oh, wrote yes. or written a load of Leeds United books in the past, hasn't he? Mm, this one yes. um, about uh, Galvanised, about the uh, Galvin, Tony uh, and yeah. uh, his brother. Yeah, that's it. The Chris and Tony Galvin, yeah. wasn't it? So, uh, yeah, two footballing 
brothers with contrasting fortunes who played in the golden age. Um, so um, Tottenham Oxford. Um, to- Tony Galvin played for Tottenham Oxford. I think he was from. He played for. I think he joined from the non-league. Yeah, Gould sure Town from Interval, yeah. something like that. Yeah, but he went on. Obviously, won the FA Cup, UEFA Cup with Spurs, alongside Glenn Hoddle, Ozzy Ardiles, etc. As well as uh, he was Ireland, wasn't he? Republic of Ireland, because I remember he played at Euro yes, '88. Yeah. yeah. Um. So um, and played at Sheffield Wednesday. And a great um, book. Tony Galvin. A great book. Yeah. Uh, uh, Spurs, nineteen eighty-one, about winning the yeah. uh, the FA Cup in nineteen eighty-one. Yeah. I showed I know, that recently. Yeah, yeah, I know Steve's had a lot to do with uh, with that book. Who actually wrote it? Was that lady, isn't it, that has written a number of Spurs books? Yeah, really perfect. Very, very famous, um, certainly in Spurs, Tottenham circles. Dame uh, Judy Welsh. Yeah, that's it. Uh, is, um, yeah, she's a prolific writer on all things Tottenham. So, uh, uh, yeah, so I think it's a collaboration. I think there's a number of people that have come to do it, but certainly Steve Perriman is one yeah. of them. Uh, alongside um, Judy Welsh, yeah, she's written loads of books. She's wrote, uh, she wrote. I remember one of the great books she wrote with a guy called Rob White. It was called The Ghost. It was okay, a yeah. Story about his his dad, John White. a legend called John White. Mm, yeah, I've got that. He was book tragic, as well, yeah. killed. Yeah, tragically killed by Lightning. bolt lightning. Yeah, wasn't it? Yeah, it was on the golf course, wasn't he? It was on the golf course, wasn't he? Was he on the golf course? Uh, I think it was, yeah, yeah. I seemed to ring a bell. Mm-hmm. Yeah, tragic though, wasn't it? Yeah, it was awesome. just, uh, yeah, Before everyone had a story on. about him. But is yeah, it, it part of the um, the double winning side, wasn't he, John White? He was, yeah, mm-hmm. absolutely, yeah, on the Bill Nicholson. So, uh, but yeah, eighty one. Um, that's the inside story of the, the FA Cup victory, isn't it? So, uh, and uh, and it, well, well, what a goal that was, wasn't it, Ricky Villa? I can still think of the commentary now, can't you? I just <laughs> Ricky Villa. Yeah, I just <laughs> my neck. I thought he was like watching the game. I thought when's it scored again? When said what a goal? <laughs> ah. I mean, they look like they're going to run out of time. There's thirty seconds left. And they're winning three 0 so I don't think there's oh, going to be time. But I think if you, that's get... almost always heartbreaking, isn't it? Well, it's so it is. close. Yeah, I think when <laughs> you get beat four 0 in the first game, it it just leaves a little bit too much to do. They've done the best, but um, yeah. But I think they're just going to run out of one goal. But there you go. Um, Hopefully they recover. And we're going to be running, running out of time shortly, sir. So what else have you got? What? on the horizon what's coming out and what's going to be yeah. your your book of choice for um, <laughs> for your foreign holiday this year <laughs> well certainly I'm looking forward to the Frank Beckenbauer one that we've mentioned um, yeah. there's a few books I'll give a shout out that's coming up that'll be really interesting it's due out in July it's been moved a few times but it's by Stuart Horsfield at Spania 82 okay, so uh, yeah. it was due to be published last year but I think it's been moved back a couple of times not sure the reasons why but that that's coming out in July, so I'm looking forward to that. And there's a few others that you'll probably be interested in. It's coming out in August. Um, there's one uh, which is based on the River Plate. We mentioned them earlier. Yes. So this is going to be uh, about River Plate. There's been a number of books about Boca Juniors. This one we're based on their great rivals. So that'll be an interesting book that comes out Is, is that going to be in a, the summer? a historical book about yeah, River what, Plate? Yeah, from what I can see, yeah, it will be. It's, um, out, from, uh, it's out by Pitch Publishing. Because they had a famous um, five forward line, didn't they? I mean, I, I think it might have been in the 30s or the 40s. I mean, way before yeah. my time, but they were really prolific. I remember yeah. reading something briefly about them uh, some yeah. time ago. So that'll be a, that'll be a good read. Yeah, absolutely. It comes out uh, yeah in August. I'm just looking at it here. So, uh, oh um, my yeah. God, they just one. scored. Have they, really? they have just scored the fourth goal in the 97th <laughs> minute. Hillsborough wow. is going mad. Curran will be going barmy. Colton My. Palmer will be going barmy. They'll be going absolutely crackers in that bar. I might give him a call in a bit. <laughs> I bet, yeah. I don't blame that. I'm well, looking forward to extra time. I'm not in front of my TV, so you're oh, in. My I'm looking. Day. I'm looking at the uh, BBC Sport. I've been out again. I must be as we're talking. Jesus so, uh, wept. Wow, that's incredible, isn't it? Nil. Extra Dragon. time. Oh. I heard Adrian Adrian Durham. He's a Peterborough fan, isn't yeah. he? On Talk Sport. I'm sure, I heard him yesterday or the day before. Uh, talking about, uh, he's still not confident. <laughs> he was right, wasn't he? Imagine if, was they, if there was VAR and they disallowed this. 
you oh, wow. would be going balmy, wouldn't you? But no. Yeah. It's yeah. um flint down <laughs> on the far post. Looks as is it Gregory again? Hat trick. Um let's just have a quick look at think <laughs> No, it wasn't Lee Gregory, no. No. It was wow. um no, one. It was Palmer, I think. I think it's Palmer, the, uh, the 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 back that scored yeah. it. Yeah, yeah, but four nil, wow. blimey. Yeah. So what else have you? <laughs> <laughs> That's what the look, of, the look of shock on these people. If they win the league, they win that league. There'll be a book coming out about that. I'm sure there'll be one. There'll be pens by uh, wow. Richard Crooks, is a prolific writer, yeah. a big Sheffield Wednesday fan. Yeah. He did uh, Granddad's seventies, yeah, um, yeah. sixties. He'll probably write a book about that. Nineties. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we could play this this podcast back when we talked about it. Because so, it has uh, been a historic season for Wednesday. They've oh wow! Yeah, amassed more points yeah. than they've ever. They've won more <laughs> games than ever. They've, I mean, they've done everything. I mean, and to go up through the playoffs now, if they can, would just yeah. be the icing on the cake. So, good luck to Sheffield Wednesday in extra time. So, yeah. I'm going to be sitting down and, and watching this. Well, I've been watching it with one eye on it and. You know my my mind focusing on uh, <laughs> on our podcast here. So finally, then what else have you Yeah, I'll, I'll mention I'll mention two others then. Yeah, it's coming out because I mentioned August, so a couple others are coming up. So uh, and there's one that's um, based on Liverpool and the Dog Leash years called The King Takes Over. Oh, good. So it's about Dog Leash from '85 to 1991. So oh, that'd be good. I'm sure. Yeah, I'm sure that'd be a great story, and it'll obviously be tragic as well. Yes. You know, they would talk about Hillsborough and mm. um and probably examine some of the circumstances around the high school, et cetera. Obviously that was an eighty five. Yeah. But that'd be coming out what a what a player he was, wasn't he? Kenny Dargley was a great player. player. You know, when they talk about Salah Salah, you know, et cetera. But yeah. Kenny Dargleach, Ian Rush, you know, that kind of era. Wonderful, weren't they? Oh I, I, would, I would say yeah. that um that Rush and and Kenny are the, yeah. the greatest front two Oof. that I've yeah. seen. Yeah. And you're right, when yeah. people go on about, you know, this Liverpool team, you know, I, I've said before, I I don't think there's probably one player, and I like Liverpool, yeah. I think they're a good team, but yeah. I don't think there's one player in this current Liverpool team that gets into an all-time Liverpool side. No, you, you, ain't, right. you ain't getting Kenny Daglish or Russian no. shirt, I'm sorry, none of you are. You're no, good, but, you're uh, brilliant players, but don't <laughs> think you're that good. No, I, I'm a Forest fan, as you know, but I must yeah. admit, when you're watching it, when you're hot, because you knew, you come up against Ian Rush, you thought, oh my God, yeah, he's just going to score. It was that prolific one, what a player. They've had some strikers, haven't they, down the years, but yeah, yeah. Rush has got to be up there. Yeah. Uh, the last one I'll mention, and that comes out in August, uh, so I'm looking forward to that, so it's called Answered Prayers, uh, it's about England of the 96 World Cup, and you might think, oh, another World Cup story about England. But it's the fact it's written by a guy called Duncan Hamilton. Now, oh, Duncan yeah. Hamilton might be a name yeah. you're familiar with. Yeah, he's he done yeah. some wonderful books. The best one uh, for me, provided oh, you don't kiss me, yeah. by Brian Clough. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So he's a wonderful author. And again, he's one of these that could put a pen to paper. But um, I've looked at the synopsis of that. Uh, and um, yeah, and it's about um, very answered prayers. So it'll be very much about yeah the whole kind of feeling around at the time and uh, I'm sure we'll go in much more detail and uh, tell the give a fresh new approach on the history about it and what it meant at the time, etc. So, uh, but again, he's one of those authors, isn't he? Um, a bit last time I mentioned, but that'd be a good one. Yeah, comes out in August, and that's uh, that's out through a publisher called River Room. So, what's your holiday um, read? What are you going to be reading? Pop- it's probably that pool. one, yeah. Well, yeah, around about that when I'm next on when my next holiday. So I've just come back from a break. So um, it'll be one of them, <laughs> probably more than likely. My next, my next one on is the actually I won't my mention one more because I've got it next week. Is when Dave went up, and it's the inside story when Wimbledon won the FA Cup in '88. Okay. So yeah. uh, by Gary Jordan, who's wrote a number of books. So uh, um, yeah, well, the crazy hang, wasn't it? So. Uh, one of the great stories, wasn't it, when the FA Cup, when it really matters. Oh, fantastic, Andy. Thanks again <laughs> for your time. Thanks for listening, Likewise. guys. And thank you for the writers that are writing these wonderful publications and the publishers so that we can read about the great times of the beautiful game. So uh, I'll leave it with you, the final word. 
Yeah, happy reading, everyone. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers, mate. Take care. All the best, Thank everyone. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.